taking over. Yeah. Right. But uh, Madam Clerk, you can go ahead with the roll. All right, Mr. Cancel Mesa. Here. Mr. Malloy. Here. Ms. Frenchfield. Okay. Um, to start the meeting off, we had a guest who was here last week, and unfortunately we didn't have the meeting. I apologize that we weren't able to get the word out to everybody. But I, I told Kuriatnik, is that last name? I told him he can go first. Okay. For the record, uh, this is going to the Ohio Ethics. So, uh, this is George Kariatnik at the April 10th workshop meeting at the County Commissioner's meeting. This is uh, the complaint I filed against them. I received your letter back last week that there are numerous complaints of the land bank, and this is probably top of the top of the chart for them on this one. I'm just going to be blunt about it. Uh, the land bank goes in. Take the taxes off foreclosed homes, get them backed up, sell them. Uh, yeah, great idea, great plan. Take a house for fifteen hundred, two thousand in taxes, they get that back. That's win win. The, the property I'm talking about now is fifteen eighty one North Main Street, old Bowling Alley, Niles Lane. Been part of that for fifty one years. Tried working with the land bank for over a year. And all my notices in, my finances, everything. Everything was good to go. All of a sudden, they come up with somebody else that popped in behind me and no idea, didn't even want the business. They, they contacted him. After me explaining that the business going there is not even zoned, they shut that down. So they still wouldn't give it to me. Uh, the bowling alley is on three acres. There's seven or eight acres behind there owned by Weathersfield. I contacted Weathersfield. They were vacant lots for a thousand years. There was just nothing. They were going to give me those part, those lots, along with uh, 1581 North State Street. I was going to bring the bowling alley back to life. That's what the land bank, that's the purpose. Bring a business back to its original, if possible. That's what we were doing. We then, uh, uh, acres that we were getting off Weathersfield, we were going to uh, bring another business over there for more tax money. And now Weathersfield was going to be able to receive money from that property that they gave us. That's where the 11 acres are all coming from. Lo and behold, nope, nope. Land Bank took 95. How much money does uh, do you got to give the Land Bank each year? I know you gave them 700,000. They got a grant. There's the same town. Well, we, we gave them demolition grants. Th those were board. those were brownfield demolition right, grants. Okay. Those were. Did the town? Did you guys have anything? Because you're on. I mean, you guys are on the board, the land bank board. No, you? but we don't. We don't give them any general fund money, none. Okay, but you're on the board, so you obviously know what's going on. Obviously, I would hope so. So the land bank took off ninety thousand in taxes. I mean, that's that's not a, a little chunk of money. That's ninety thousand that this lady owned for twenty years and never paid a dollar on it. Probably because her daughter works for the courts. But how are you? So now they sell the property to somebody else that's going to put storage units in there. They took my plan, told him to go to Weathersfield, let them know that you want these acres to do exactly what I was going to do. All because a personal vendetta with some people. People don't like me, let's get it. But to do that, how does that happen? Just because you don't like me, you let that happen? And now this guy gets up. He takes my, the land bank gave him my ideas. He went to Weathersfield, got the property. He's doing everything over there. He's tearing the building down to make storage units. It's going to give you, what, 1500 a year in taxes? Bowling Alley and the two businesses I was bringing was going to give you close to seven to eight, $9,000 in taxes. Yearly, you would have recouped those taxes. You're not going to get it by, by storage unit. You're going to get a thousand dollars a year of taxes. The land bank said, and each time I talked to Jessica and Matt, nobody was in front of you. Nobody was in front of you. I went there three times, but everything was good. But they kept pushing it off, blowing it off, blowing it off. To go out and find somebody to get the property so they can say he's a better, per he's a better. Uh, person to get that property or do something with it, I mean, it's all written out. How, how does this happen? I mean, how does this happen? I bought a house through the land bank five years ago, paid the money down, gave them the check, paper signed, everything. I get a call from the neighbor 
says, hey, I thought you bought this property. I did, 52 Morningside. Well, Jeff Crowley just said, our contractor's over here to give estimates on redoing the place. And how's that possible? I got a signed contract. He said, they don't care. They're, they're getting the house. We eventually got the house. We, we, we complained about it a little bit. We, we eventually got the house. But that's another case that that happened. And I could just see this happening over and over that if you're not in that little clique, you're not getting it. I mean, I got a business in Niles. Can I forego my taxes for 20 years? Had the land bank come in and buy it out of foreclosure and I buy it back for a dollar, wipe the taxes out? They did that on Cedar Street. Owned by the school. A couple other people went back and forth, back and forth. They finally went to the land bank. They wiped out $2,300 in taxes. He sold the, bit, the property back to Jason Autobelli for one dollar. He made eight hundred and eight thousand dollars off that piece of property. That wiped out the taxes and paid a dollar for it. The paper also said the land bank was giving applications out to the four houses. First application will be given out on Thursday. First come, first serve. Ex council member Ryan McNaughtney, mother went down on a Tuesday, got her application two days earlier, bought the first house. In a cycle here now, and personally, you know, I, it is what it is. But this, this 1581 Main Street, it's just, it's, it's devastating. The place is in my uh, life for 51 years. <clears throat> I had everything set, ready to go, and they put me off, put me off. Oh, we find somebody else with a, a stronger background. You know what? To tear it down and put storage units, took my idea, and you guys are okay with that? I mean, you guys don't see something wrong here? We we serve on the land bank, but we we have surrogates that serve for us a lot of the times. So, I understand that. that but so so, have you been to the land bank meetings though? Oh yeah yeah oh yes. Let me ask, who is Sam Lacuska? He's the treasurer of Trumbull County. That's what I thought. Does he work inside here? Mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed. I would be embarrassed for him to walk around like he just got out of bed with a t-shirt on, wrinkled to represent the county like that. Was I was well, appalled. My taxpayers are paying for that kind of a that dress code. But I tried talking. He didn't want to hear it two minutes in. He says, let's adjourn this meeting. Everybody said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, out they went. It was two, three weeks ago, I think. Right before I talked to you, the week before that, it was uh, third week, third Tuesday of the month. Didn't want to hear a word I had to say. I mean, don't, does anybody see... See something here that's not right? What's going on? Well, well, was there when you say that you were skipped over for that other business? Was there a stronger business model for that? I mean, was there a strong? I mean, financially, were they ready to go? And the, I, I told them uh, is that that all matters, you know. Right. Once matters. everything was ready to go, I was going to be over there within seven to ten days, put a brand new roof on it, uh, get the deeds transferred, and we were putting a sixty by sixty pool barn on it for my uh, street apartment that was going there. Mm -hmm. We were ready to go. They then came in and said, well, this guy, that owns, he collects junk cars for a living. He's right down on 169, right by uh, the dollar store, with all the junk cars and motors sitting there. They didn't even ask, when they approved him, <clears throat> they didn't even ask the four neighbors, which I got letters from, which I sent to Ethics. They didn't even come out and ask him and say, hey, would you care to have a junkyard next to your property? Hey, would you guys? I mean, as a land bank. Don't, don't the land bank, shouldn't the land bank at least talk to the neighbors? If there's a building sitting there, you know, the bowling world, reach out to somebody in the bowling world four years ago when they took it over and said, hey, guys, let's try to work together and bring this back to the bowling alley. So if him collecting trash cars, which $550,000 received in a 401, I'll bet my house, he don't got that. He don't got that. So they waited and told another guy, probably has more money than me, but that's not the issue. I had the money. I was ready to go. I had the loans ready, everything ready to go. And I get a call five or six days ago. Man, they just screwed you. They gave it to Lou, Lou Gerke doing uh, put storage sheds in there. Took my, they gave him my idea. How do, you, how do you, the land bank give somebody... Another person, when, you, when you say give them your idea, you mean to, for the bowling alley or for storage? So they gave them the idea to go to Weathersfield to ask to get those extra locks back there. Okay. All he was doing was buying three locks of the bowling alley. Okay. They told him that, and he was like, oh, that's great. Now he goes there, and now he's 
no bigger storage. How ethical is that? Uh, and I don't want to speak to what the land bank has voted on. It wasn't that. No, don't. No, but I'm asking you as a commissioner, right. how ethical is that for somebody to do that? I mean, just hearing your side of the story, obviously you're you're very passionate. You have an argument here. It sounds like, but without talking to Sam and the rest of the board members, I. And I, I, I understand that, and I'm hoping the next uh, the next meeting I come to and talk about this, you guys reach out and even have them. And if, if I'm if I'm just being just we will honest, always invite them here. Would you like to have Sam here? Yes, I would. And we'll Matt, invite Matt Martin. Him. Okay. And Jessica, who was involved in the process. We can certainly invite them here next because time. Because that's why it's being filmed. It's in any way I said anything that was untruthful. It, it's it's not. It's just unethical. It's just, it's not right. Well, the best thing to do is get them here, and then we can discuss it openly and transparently. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know enough about I, this. I don't, I don't know if they do a bid. I don't know if they do an auction. I'm, that's all new to me. This whole, I'm familiar with the demolition part. The other part, I, I don't know enough to even speak on. And I know you guys wouldn't, but that's why I'm just bringing it here, letting you know what's going on, my stuff with the ethics and everything. And also, I've been here before, and I've never seen the sheriff. We have a sheriff that's oh, assigned to us okay. every every meeting we have. We have that's two of them in here in every meeting and right. workshop. But the next workshop, is there any way that you guys think you'll be able to talk to them? If not, I'll wait a week or so, or come back in two weeks. I, I think we, can we can we invite uh, those three individuals, Matt Martin, uh, Jessica from TNP, and Sam Sam and Kusa to yeah. our next uh, workshop. We'll have them here, so. So we'll find, right. find out if they, if this, yeah, if they can make it. Yeah, I'll be bases with you guys. Okay, you that's, fine. that's fine. But I knew you guys wouldn't have answers, nothing like that. I just, don't, I just want you to know what's going on and why. I'm but we want to get you the answers. So. 51 years I got that property. That property should have been mine. So thank you, and uh, have a nice day, everyone. Thank you, Shane. Okay. You're done. Okay, anybody else have anything of pressing matter or other means you got to get to that need to go to the top of the list? Sir, you good? Okay, we'll just uh, start down the regular agenda then. This is for the regular meeting April 10th. Uh, dispense with the minutes of the workshop, approve the bills, approve additional appropriations. Uh, Commissioner, we have uh, budgetary explanations for all of the appropriations that are given to all three commissioners, uh, being that Christy and Martha couldn't be, oh, Christy's here, but being that Martha couldn't be here today, but they're all in writing here for us. Okay, and I'm okay with just reading them and understanding them myself. If yeah, I want to go over them now, we can. Yeah, we can go over them. Yeah. Obviously, starting from the top, uh, stone building design would be money allocated for the HVAC for the roof. The whole building. The whole building. Okay. Um. Dog kennel design is we we've yes. discussed that and we've yes. already and that's, moved on that and that's going in the contract today in the, today's agenda so um, you approve that fund number the money allocated um, I had Commissioner Malloy sign the papers which I threw out the last page that you signed because I wanted to make sure I did it again and it's done properly so we don't have a hiccup later down the road so um, if this passes tomorrow I'll have you re-sign the back of the contract and redate it so it's current and up to date gotcha. And that's with Baker Bednar? Yes. Okay. Uh, the various ARPA, obviously, we, we've, we've covered those every meeting with the AWL grant, uh, community family grant, and Vienna Township, the March radios. Um, those are something that we've moved on already, I believe. Uh, security fobs for the court administration. Does anybody want to talk about that? I'm that assuming. was what Shara put in. Um, okay. We just didn't budget enough for it. They need a new fobs over there. New fobs. Court building. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Replace them all. Understanding. Okay. So those are all additional appropriations. Those yes. are new appropriations. Mm -hmm. These are all transfers yes. uh, from from fund to fund, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, so it's yes. on new money. Is it's not. Um, it's additional appropriations. Those funds had room to uh, increase the appropriations. For example, the first one, we are increasing it because of the debt that was. Money oh no, no, I don't mean the. I don't mean those. I mean the next set. So oh, the okay. transfers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it's okay. Fund fund, yeah. okay. Okay. No, no, no. That's all right. 
So, so this is no new money on the, the transfer of appropriations. We can go through some of these if you'd like, Commissioner, if you, or if you want to just look at them. Or, um, I mean, I mean, why, why don't Bob, Bob? Why don't you go through these real quick as, as a secretary okay. for the for the first ones because you got a the lion's share of them, I guess. Uh, Bob Meyer, Anno Sanitary Engineers. Uh, the first one we're going to move twenty thousand to our transfer to other funds, and we're going to use that money to start up our Smith Stewart sewer project. Um, in Fund 496, the $78,627, that's for our final uh, payment to utility contracting for our Mineral Ridge Hydraulic Project. The $31,136 is to remove a negative balance for our Mineral Ridge debt payment. Um, we have 23000 in Fund 602. We are buying a new sewage pump for our Lordstown Saves 4 uh, facility, and that's 23,000. Um, in Fund 474, that's our heat and shoot project. We had Eastgate fees pay for the 11,000. Um, the $8,865 is Eastgate fees for our Swift Drive project. The $3,520 is for our State Road Phase 2 uh, Eastgate fees. The $9,341 is for our Mineral Ridge Hydraulic Project Eastgate fees. And the $2,417 is for steer tires for our Freightliner Semi down at Mosquito Creek and some additional tools for Mosquito Creek. Okay, cool. Uh, Planning Commission, we have uh, anybody here? Nick, that's just a moving funds for $200 to, for the notary certification. Who's that new employee? Uh, that's the notary certification for uh, Danette. She is, oh, she yes. is uh, Missy is our executive assistant here. Yes. Um, and she is getting her notary. And actually, I think Emily is going to be our grants coordinator as well. Okay. Um, a lot of our items need notary, um, whether it be for the clients or for our office. So. Yeah. Having one in house is very beneficial. Absolutely. Sheriff's office, anybody here from the sheriff's office by chance? Or on the phone, anyone from the sheriff's yeah. office? Christy, do we know anything about these? Um, the first two for this, oh, I'm sorry, the first one, the $25,000 in the general fund is just a transfer. They received a grant from the adult probation office. Okay. And they're just moving it from one expense account to another to pay for something they decided to buy. Uh, the next two were needed in um, Fund 063 and 019 for um, the additional amount needed for a workers' comp premium. The $5,000 is just being moved in the general fund from one account to another for training purposes. All right. Uh, moving on to the Board of Health. Again, we don't, this isn't general fund dollars, so we have no um, really authority over it. But as you can see, that purchase of a motor vehicle and the building mortgage payment. Um, just regular uh, housekeeping issues for them on that. And then if you turn over to the back, we have uh, the amended cert, uh, certificate of the County Budget Commission. Chris, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, it's a certificate number 3-2024. It was passed by the uh, Budget Commission on April 1st. We had two accounts that were increasing <laughs> revenue. The first one is the Sanitary Engineer's Office for $50,000 in Fund 466, and that was uh, due to our revenue transfer from fund number 602. And then um, Planning Commission uh, received an additional $3,881, and this is for the HUD grant slash project allocation. Um, the expense side of this was approved by the commissioners in the March 27th meeting. Sometimes when they receive money, they don't uh, haven't budgeted for it, so they do the revenue and the expense side. They don't always show up the same week because the Budget Commission only meets every other week. Gotcha. Takes care of those. Make sure you want me to keep going, or you want to take? Keep going. Okay. Um, okay. So that takes us to agenda item number six, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. To approve an agreement by and between the Trumbull County Board of Commissioners, uh, Trumbull County Auditor Martha Yoder, and Environmental Systems Research Institute to purchase Esri Esri Enterprise mm -hmm. Advantage Program (EEAP) consulting services. Total cost is $108,500 uh, to be paid from that fund. 
and this will provide one year of consulting and training services. The agreement has been reviewed by the Trimble County Prosecutor's Office. Is this something we've normally done in the past, Christy? If I'm going to defer to yes, Hannah first. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this, this, this uh, is new. Tim, this is new. Tim Hanford, uh, IT director. Um, this is a new program that we're, we're going to be getting involved in. Before we would normally interact with third party vendors, with this program, this is new for, for Esri. Uh, they are going to be providing support and training for us for upgrading our software and potentially bringing in other departments such as sanitary, such as planning, where they won't have to purchase their, their own Esri licenses. And it, it, in the long run, it's going to save the county money from that end. Um, it also is going to give us the ability to uh, upgrade our property search features. Um, we will be able to host those in-house and provide better support for the, for the community with property searches. So this, this is kind of a big deal because it's, it's going to upgrade our current software and it's also going to provide the training to staff to be able to support that software. In the long run, it will end up saving the county money. It just, it's going to wrap up all, all, all these little separate pieces and bring them all into one area. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Questions on that? Uh, moving on uh, to concur with the engineer, Trumbull County engineer, to grant the right of way permits requested by the companies listed on uh, this village energy cooperative and ASW pipeline. Uh, and by the way, if anybody's on the line from the highway engineer's office, feel free to chime in here, but we're going to move through these. Those are routine right-of-way permits. Uh, number eight, to approve the personnel action for the employment transfer of Mr. Keith Ames from the position of sewer line maintenance assistant, pay range six, zero years, at $17.52, uh, to the position of TV inspector, grouting assistant technician, pay range six, Zero years at 17.52. So it's a sort of a lateral move there. Bob? It is. It's on our sewer crew. We have three assistants. Two of them run a flush truck or a vac truck. The other position runs our TV truck. So he's just moving from the flush truck to the TV truck. Okay. What happens with the with the vacated position? We already have it posted. Okay. Very good. Mm. Questions? Anyone? Uh, Number nine, to accept third party, third party contract between grantee, Direction Home of Eastern Ohio, and subgrantees, Grace African Methodist Episcopal Church, and Easter Seals of Mahoning, Trumbull, and Columbia, Columbiana Counties for $10,000. Per Ohio Healthy Aging Grant Agreements, as awarded March 6, 2024, per action taken by the Trumbull County Commissioners, and duly recorded in the journal uh, Grantee may enter into a third party contract to accomplish the intent and purposes of the agreement after the proposed third party contract has been approved by Trumbull County in writing. Submitted, as submitted to Senior Services Administrator Diane Siskowit Jerkovic, uh, Direction Home of Eastern Ohio, and request a third party contract for the Kinship Respite Program with Grace African Methodist Episcopal Church. 1137 Main Avenue, Southwest Warren. Diane, tell us a little bit about this, because I don't know anything about oh, it. No, right, 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 right. One of these days, one of us. It's not Italian, I can't pronounce it. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. 1209 and number 11 are similar. Um, when the Ohio Healthy Aging Grant um, requests were submitted, they had in their plan to subcontract what they were being granted to these third parties. So per our legal team, prosecutor's office, they review our original contracts and in that contract, these grantees have the ability to sub-grantee their okay. contracts. So basically number nine is uh, Direction Home is going to subgrant to Grace and to Easter Seals for their kinship respite program that was already awarded. And number 11 is Youngstown Jewish Federation is subgranting to Merkin and Associates for their various programs that were also requested. 
this uh, new? Prosecutor's office did approve that. Okay. Is this new? Have we uh, has the grantee used the subgrant award for other? We've never had anyone that has yeah. subgranted that way, so this is. But it's always been a part of the contract that yeah. they could do that. Yeah, I forget which item number is item number eight. Our contracts have the ability to subgrant. And the advisory council's okay with that. It was requested that way in the original plan, okay. but we had to go through this whole extra process to allow that subgrantee. Okay. To occur. Great. Okay. All right, so that takes care of number 9 and 11. Number 10, 10 okay. is my oopsies. Oh. <laughs> okay. When these applicants uh, requested the funding, I uh, put it on the agenda as they had requested it with their legal name, their name that they had requested it under. Okay. But when they submitted their W-9s and all their backup documentation, they don't know their legal names, mm -hmm. and now we've got some incorporated data to the terminology. Okay. Um, two of the five were, I, I should have seen that because they are current senior levy providers, but the other three are new to me. Okay. So that's what number 10 is all about. So just the legal names to agree to their W-9. Okay. Okay. Which is important, I guess, only that's my new that's I should have had that Okay. Okay. Yeah, we correct okay. it. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that takes care. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to be here tomorrow because we have a healthy a health grant or a senior levy, I'm sorry, a senior levy health fair at the Liberty Shepherd of the Valley. So I will listen in as best as I can okay. if there's any questions. So okay. Thank you. Me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, number 12. Um, any questions on those? I think we covered those. Number 12, uh, to release Mr. Vince, Vincent Peterson as a member of the Trumbull County Local Corrections Planning Board. Obviously, Mr. Peterson has retired. Uh, long employee here in Trumbull County, great great person, great employee here in Trumbull County. Uh, so we'll, we definitely will miss him and, uh, and on that board as well. Uh, number 13, to release Judge Thomas Geisigam uh, as a member of the Trumbull County Local Corrections Planning Board. Again, he's no longer um, sitting judge, so, uh, uh, so we're, we're looking for um, those two positions, obviously. Um, for the recommendation on both of those of Ms. Tracy Hunt, um, Chief Probation Officer. So I'm sure we'll be filling those soon. Uh, number 14, uh -oh. to adopt an improvement resolution determining that, uh, to proceed with the construction of the Scoville Drive Sanitary Sewer Improvements Project, known as County Project Number 5-S-16 in the Trumbull County Combined Sanitary Sewer District, Mosquito Creek Subdistrict and to authorize the Board of Trumbull County Commissioner's Clerk to add status for sealed bids for the construction of said project. Uh, Scott Vernon, oh. sanitary engineer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the public hearing was held on December 14th for the project. Uh, it received a 93.77% approval. Based on that, we're proceeding towards construction. What was the approval of it? 93.77%. Okay, great. great. It's, uh, 14 homes and a church yeah. be benefited by this. That's right. That's right. Okay. Questions? I see uh, Mr. Bellish waiting patiently. We'll get to you as soon as this sure. is over, okay? Is that okay? Oh, sure. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt now, but I just noticed you out of the corner of my eye, but we'll get yeah. to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's, that's really important as well. Uh, number 15, to authorize Denny Malloy, President of the Board, uh, to sign a notice to proceed letter for ProScape septic and landscape contractors for the replacement of three household treatment systems being funded through the Home Sewage Treatment System Reserve Program uh, for eligible homeowners awarded on March 6, 2024. Uh, Just quickly, if you want to. Nick Coggins, Trump County Planning Commission. Uh, 15 and 16 are both um, related to the heat and shoot project. These are two of the contracts, our contractors that were awarded back on March 6th uh, to connect some of the loader moderate income households to the sanitary line that was recently completed by our sanitary engineers. Um, this is just the notice to proceed for two of those contractors. The other two have already received the notice to proceed and are out there working. Thank you. That's Nick Coggins from the Planning Commission. Uh, number 17, execute on behalf of Trumbull County, the natural gas, here we go, uh, Mr. Bellish, natural gas purchase contract with Constellation uh, new Energy Gas Division, uh, 
commercial and industrial sales effective with the September 2024 billing cycle and ending with the August 2025 billing cycle at a fixed rate of 3.09 per MCF for the burner tip for the purchase of natural gas for county departments listed. This action for the recommendation of Mr. Tom Bellish, uh, President of Buckeye Energy Brokers. Tom, you want to talk about this for? Yeah, sure. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to work with the uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, so last year, <clears throat> at the price of 365, this year we eclipsed that. Uh, 309 was the price last week. It's slightly higher. Um, buyers only buy so many price points. They bought one at 309, 319. So today it's 319. It's up a little higher. It's still a savings of $14,000 rather than the other. So we need to journalize this 319 in here then? Um, or do, do you call it tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. so like, like it says at the bottom, it's Prices does change. change. Yeah, prices okay. drop tomorrow. Right. It's a moving it's the thing. It's a, it is. <clears throat> um, so this is unusual mm -hmm. for it to happen like this. We've had suppliers hold it for us, right. uh, but they just couldn't do that. Uh, but we're still way under where we were. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is uh, still recommended. Uh, for how long? Uh, one year. So okay. Three sixty-five down to nineteen, saving fifteen thousand. So I still recommend it. And uh, <clears throat> best we can. Uh, but that was the quote this morning. So I had all the suppliers rebid, refresh their bid, and this is right. So is the public available still to get in on these types of pricing? Yeah, for for the aggregation, uh, three still three ninety nine for residents, three eighty nine with the discount. Those over sixty five can get uh, three eighty. Now, I know last year when we did this, we announced. How to do it? And literally, I had <laughs> dozens of people call me, and many called back and said they went down from like 14 bucks or nine bucks to the three area or four area. I think it's 413. Some were getting them out or whatever. But what? So let's publicize how they do that again for the people that are listening. How do they get yeah. involved in an aggregate program? <clears throat> yeah, we we can do that. Um, so I know that those numbers are those phone numbers are on the on the commissioner's website and. Uh, I'll have to uh, have uh, that new number. Can we just can we post that, Tim, mm -hmm. on the commissioner's oh, website yeah, definitely, for definitely. interested well, public? That as wants long to, as we have, we can do it. Yeah. Okay, we'll get yeah. that. We'll just Tom, yeah. we'll just get yeah, that to, to, uh, to Tim, and we'll put it on the Trumbull County Commissioner yep. website. Yep. And let people know this is who we're dealing yep. with, and then they can call on their own. What about something in the paper? The notice well, in the paper. That's up to the paper to pick up on that, but. That is, uh, we did help a lot of people last year when we yeah. announced that and the electric rates even at you know, a different time, it's, it helped a lot of people. Okay. You could choose, uh, Commissioner Alexander, Dean, and John C. Bush, HR, you could choose to do a press release if you want. Um, that, that's completely up to the board. So that's a good idea, like too. If you feel like it's beneficial to do a press release, um, we can send it out, we can type it up and send it out to all the news media. Well, I can have that. You can have that. Yeah, let's that do that. that. But just to be clear that we're still under for the for the aggregation system. We're still under that other three years that we Yeah, it's almost, well, it's almost two years now. Two years now. At this point. So that hasn't changed. Term. That hasn't changed. This is for our buildings. Yeah, right? this is just for the buildings. Okay. Uh, there's an opportunity to get even a better price. So okay. I wanted to offer that. To okay. The board. And uh, I still recommend that. And uh, really good deal, I think. So we're certainly going to see a savings of Trumbull, you know, mm -hmm. as, yeah. as far as uh, us. Over the current rate. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, if you want to have a press, yeah, let's drop a press release. And we can I do the press release and get the agreement over. That'd be great. Constellation. Now, is this lowered price? Is that just a sign of mild winter, excess supply? Uh, a little bit of each. It's <clears throat> demand. It is. Uh, you know, I, when they send in the numbers, I just get a number. I don't really get an explanation, but it's significantly better than anybody else. So I'm not sure what uh, they're just being aggressive. Win the business back because like, I don't think they've had ever had this business. had IGS in the past mm -hmm. and uh, some other, um, so they're just trying to try get their foot in the door. Yeah. Very we good. appreciate you shopping and right. getting us the lowest rate. That's for sure. Great. Thanks for that. Thank you. I can only imagine what our utility bills are <coughs> going. So a little bit of a savings goes a long, oh, yeah. long way in government for sure. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank you. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, 18, uh, to award a contract to Baker Bednar Snyder and Associates um, 
for the new dog pound design qualification project at its new location next to the Animal Welfare League, located at 812 Youngstown Kingsville Road, Lyon, Ohio. Total engineering costs of $192,000 to be paid from the fund as listed. This is obviously a long time coming, but we're uh, one step closer. One step closer, and we keep chugging along here. So yes. um, this is this is a step in the right direction. And uh, Baker Bednar, who we've worked with in the past on many projects, and, and even when we when we looked at uh, expansion on on the dog pound in the prior and even prior prior years, looking at a new facility, they were there. So it's it's good that they're they're familiar with a lot of what we're doing and what we try. Um, to accomplish with this, with this facility. So I feel confident moving in that direction. Bill, thank you for all the legwork that you're doing and um, let's break ground by fall. Yes. That's what I said. Yes. Okay. Uh, number 19, um, to appropriate funds to mitigate the growth and negative impact of the spread of hydrilla in Mosquito Lake. Oh, good, this is on here. And the amount of 300000 to be paid in three annual installments uh, starting in 2024 uh, from the fund is listed uh, to be used by the Trumbull County Economic Development Director, Nick Coggins, for the purposes of processing and paying invoices reviewed and approved by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Payments will be made directly to the state, purchasing selected vendor, who is Ohio Lake Management Services, uh, doing business as uh, Aqua Dock Pound, Dock Pond and Lake Management, uh, Mayfield Road, Chardon, Ohio, uh, who is under contract with ODNR to conduct fluoridone uh, chemical treatment that addresses the aquatic nuisance vegetation issue at Mosquito Lake. The appointment of the Office of Economic Development was made by the commissioners on January 2nd, 2024, uh, under the authority of the Ohio Revised Code is listed uh, and that provides us authority for the expenditure of funds by the Office of Economic Development with the approval of the board uh, make loans or grants and provide other forms of financial assistance for the purpose of economic development including financial assistance for permanent public improvements in compliance with applicable laws of the state and fix the rate of interest and charges to be made for such financial assistance. County recognizes the critical role Mosquito Lake has in economic development and prosperity of Trumbull County and the importance of mitigating the growth and negative impact of the spread of hydrilla on the lake. The expenditure of funds is contingent upon the Ohio, the, excuse me, the Office of Economic Development entering into a memorandum of understanding with the vendor of Ohio Lake Management Services, again doing business as, doing business as Aqua Dock Pond at, and Lake Management in order to define the process for the payment of invoices in coordination with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and receipt of written approvals within correspondence detailing a specific proposal by ODNR, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and any other entity having control over the lake and or water quality for drinking purposes. So this is something that we've obviously discussed at nauseum before, but we've been working on this for about a year. And, and the big thing with this is there's so many different entities, and then yep. we had to figure out the, the legality of us giving money that isn't county. This isn't a county-owned lake or anything like that. But if this were a highway, if this needed a turning lane, if this needed traffic congestion, if this was something that was going to benefit the citizens of the county um, economically, uh, which it absolutely is, and that's right. why we decided to go with our planning commission. That the amount of money that's brought to Mosquito Lake with its 1.6 million visitors a year. Uh, that we have um, is being negatively impacted by the Cedrilla. Now, there's a safety factor of uh, people busting props, people breaking ankles trying to ski, people not being able to get out of the marinas, yeah. and it's something that will scare away investment, scare away people coming to the lake where they can choose one of the other lakes that don't have this problem. Um, this has been something that's come in the last couple of years. The Hydrilla is just one plant species. We don't want to give the impression that we're going to treat this and there'll be no more vegetation on the lake and it's all going to be you know, crystal clear. That's not the case, but the hydrilla is the bad one that mats together that really has no um, resourceful biological use for fish and or the environment. It sucks the oxygen out of the water. It mats up together and, and causes safety issues and it spreads very quickly. And not only spreads here, but spreads to other lakes with, with just minute pieces of it that could be 
attached to someone's boat or in their bilge pump, bilge water or um, stuck to the trailer or things like that. So um, it is something that needs to be treated as a nuisance. It's something that's non-native to the United States. It was brought in on um, freighter ships from overseas that just doesn't click environmentally with our lake. So to keep that economic engine as it is, second largest lake in the state, 100000 a year over three years to stop this is a small, small investment on our county's part to the return we're going to see in the future. I personally think we need to dump millions into that lake, but we'll go one piece at a time. If this is a start, if this handles this aspect of things, let's handle the weeds, and then we'll worry about infrastructure and other stuff as we, as we move into the future. But we cannot ignore this because if we do, and all the scientists, all the biologists have already told us, the stuff doubles every year. So if we're looking at a $300,000 bill now, if we don't act now, we'll have a $600,000 bill next year and over a million in the third year if we ignore it and we turn a blind eye to this stuff. You know, this is real science right in front of our eyes that we cannot ignore real science. This isn't theory or someone's philosophy. They have experience with other lakes in Ohio and the United States, and we've got the best of the best professionals stating, this is here, it's a problem, here's how you fix it. Either fix it or ignore it, but if you ignore it, you're going to pay the consequences down the road. Right. And the consequences are economic and, you know, I mean, to the point where people were telling me, well, I don't even dock my boat there anymore. That's right. Or I'm not getting a slip this year. I'm not getting a dock. Or I'm going to yeah. Berlin instead. Right. Uh, and that's something, uh, Bill Danzo, thank you for you and your staff. I know this has uh, kind of been a pain for you to figure out the legality loopholes with this thing, but there are some other counties that have done this. Uh, he reached out to them. Uh, he did his due diligence on this and found the way to make sure that we were doing this legal and protecting ourselves also. Um, you know, there's still a few little hurdles we got to get over making, you know, getting a warrant to sign off and in the core in the state, but that's, we're all on the same team with this stuff. We all yeah. want a healthy Mosquito Lake. So those hurdles, I believe, won't be an issue at all. But you've cleared the biggest one by finding a way for us to get involved now without any further delay and causing us to potentially have twice the bill next year. Thank you. Uh, Christy Sines, Auditor of Cesaric. Only question back to my maiden name. <laughs> uh, parents over the weekend. Uh, Christy Cesaric, Auditor's Office. Uh, just a note, as part of this agenda item, we've also put a, a, a note at the bottom that the payments are going to be paid out of the Planning Commission's general uh, fund budget with transfers from not Fund 949, the Medicare. Okay. Oh, okay. Over the three years. So that way we take care of any budgetary issues at this time and don't have to put them on each time the payments are made. Very good. Very good. And Beth, I'm going to say Beth Cormack, we have to thank her because she kind of really wasn't her jurisdiction, but as important as Mosquito Lake is to our tourism here, um, that's one of the number one tourist attractions. It is the number one tourist attraction in the, in the region. She stepped up with the help of the uh, Didi Petrosky, the mayor of Cortland, Jeffrey Jank, special events coordinator, and then the, the park manager and the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers manager. They've all been instrumental in this thing of everyone doing their part to, to do this. But we kind of needed one person to generate the emails, one person to really get things together, and Beth stepped up with that. She not only did that, but she reached out to both of our U.S. senators and our congressional offices that affect Mosquito Lake, and uh, they're all aware of what we're doing. It's because of her efforts, so I appreciate that too, Beth. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. This is a bigger Thank project you. than any of us could have done on our own. Okay, uh, number 20, uh, to adopt a resolution authorizing expenditure for responding to or mitigating public health emergency from American Rescue Plan Act, Liberty Township Park. Uh, so I know Liberty Township, This I believe this is their only Asked that they had, and if you go to the back page, uh, one time grant, um, whereas the county has determined uh, that Liberty Township has demonstrated that improvement of the proposed walking path will assist in responding to the adverse impact of the public health emergency, and therefore the county has determined that in the judgment of the board, the following grant qualifies as a type of project that will respond to and mitigate the adverse economic effects of the pandemic. And again, one time grant to Liberty Township in the amount of Four hundred fifty thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand to be used toward the improvement of the stormwater management system at Liberty Center uh, Park, and two hundred thousand uh, to be used toward improving the ball fields, picnic pavilions, and walking paths at Liberty Center Park. So, uh, again, all those outdoor uh, 
projects that we have that, that obviously a lot of them, when we talk about public public recreation spaces, they all they all qualify for uh, that. And this is Liberty Township's only ask, I believe. From the and this is this it's is a larger ask. As far as townships go, Brookfield and Liberty got the biggest chunk so far. Yeah. But there were drainage issue things involved that are going to yeah. affect our, our whole county with that. That's right. And with the importance economically, we know as you know, 422 and Niles and Beaumont Avenue and Liberty is often overlooked as kind of yep. old news. Um, there's a, a a plan there, build a better Belmont group is a, has a plan there to work with us to increase the awareness of Belmont Avenue again, make it relevant again. Yep. And this ties all in with that, with Liberty having the ball fields. I mean, I've been there before on oh, yeah. game day watching kids play Little League, and it's it's like a beehive of, of activity. And for them to not be able to have games on some days because of poor drainage and then send everybody home and then have to reschedule and delay, they definitely have a problem there. This is right where the community center is. Yep. So, you know, there's certain places like that with Gerard Community Center, the Wellness Center in Niles, the um, uh, Liberty uh, ball fields that are kind of the anchor points of the community. I think we all saw yesterday people gravitate toward those as community, as a place to go, and this is something we have to bring these up and keep these at a high elevated platform as far as our awareness to make sure that the key points in this county the key meeting places, the key community aspects are funded and funded well, and we, we don't overlook their needs. And, and hats off to Liberty Township trustees on this for filling the grant out correctly, filling it out detailed that basically they, they we couldn't say no to this. They made it oh, so yeah. that, that we had to say yes to their request because they did it so well, and they dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's. And this is something that I know Liberty Township, a lot of times it's been said to me since I've been here, and even when I was campaigning before, they feel like they're more Youngstown than they are Trumbull County. They are Trumbull County, and we need to embrace that, and we need to make them one of our assets again and not trade them away to Youngstown. So happy to do this one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, 21 uh, goes along with that, obviously. So uh, with the legal – from our legal counsel, from um, Baker, Dublacar, Beck, Wiley, and Matthews. Uh, number 22, to award a contract to Bechtel Controls. Um, if Sheriff is listening, also, I don't mean to bring it yeah, up. Yeah, no, no. If Sheriff is listening tomorrow, Sheriff, we um, do have a dummy check. There will be Liberty trustees here tomorrow oh, okay. that are coming to the meeting, right. and we approve this thing, as I feel we will. Oh, yeah. It would be nice if we have, I know I talked to her about ordering dummy checks before, yeah. but so they can put it in their local little hometown newspaper, things like that. Sure. I don't know if we have it back from printers yet, but if we do, I'd like to have that for tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, 22, to award a contract to Bechtel Controls, Inc. Uh, for the removal, disposal, and replacement of current warehouse lighting, total cost of $32,980. Uh, from 1869 Warren Avenue, Niles, Ohio. Board of elections. Board of elections. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we should. We should. We uh, gotta put board of elections. In there. <laughs> yeah, we need to. We need to add that in there, please, Chrissy. Um, we this was brought up to us before. We just redid the damn building, put a new roof on, and made it like one of the top buildings in the county. We didn't do anything about the lights in the warehouse. So that's kind of an oversight, I guess, in a sense. But the employees do work in the warehouse a lot, and as we know, lighting is always a big factor, a big issue with the. Uh, being able to do the job correctly, health of employee, the whole nine yards now today. Yes, we did receive, Edra McCavage, Deputy Director, we did receive three quotes. Okay. And we did go, two of them were very close and went with um, Bechtel being the lowest and best. They put in our service, they put in the remodeling, our everything there, and we're very confident that they'll do a great job. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah. Okay, number 23 is uh, executive session pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 121.22G3, um, pending or imminent uh, court action. Uh, 24 is to reconvene. 25 is another executive session uh, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 121.22G1 um, for the discipline of an employee and then reconvening from that from 26. 27, uh, to, to approve the personnel action 
for a two-day unpaid suspension of an employee of the Trumbull County uh, Building Maintenance Department. This employee violated the Trumbull County Policy and Procedures Manual. The employee will serve the suspension from Tuesday, April 16, 2024 through Wednesday, April 17, 2024. I guess do we need them, do we need to have that on there approved or disproved? Because we haven't made the decision on yet. Do we have the <coughs> executive action where we already have it listed on here? I guess you can put approve or disapprove, but um, we will be coming out of executive from that. Correct. So we'll be making that. So, I mean, you can say. I guess we always vote no on the approve if we need to. Right. But I don't know. I've seen it worded a different way. Yeah. That's why. So approve or deny. Or, yeah. yeah, right. You can, or you just don't you vote on make it. a motion and it just doesn't go right. through. And exactly. then it, it's yeah. non-existent. It's up to you. Okay. Um, Whatever, whatever past practice is the best. Yeah. I guess yeah. look up past. I only ask because I do remember seeing approval deny on yes. some other executive sessions. We've I don't, uh, for the record, HR, I don't put approval deny. If you would like me to, I can. However, obviously, we're asking you to approve it, strongly asking you to approve mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Of course, the board can do whatever you want. Right. Um, however, I would just, if you don't want to approve it, then there's just no second, and right. it, it, the motion dies on the floor. Gotcha. So, right. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just the only reason I stress that is because you've got and I want to caution you that we've gotten very into the weeds of what needs or needs not to be put into this agenda. Okay, we don't want to stir that back up because we've said other communities we've been looking. Lisa and I, Chris, she's not you know Lisa's not here today, but Lisa and I have been looking in depth at how other communities do their motions, their notes, their agendas, and we write books. Right. I, I'm telling you, we write theories and synopses compared to other counties. So I mean, I just be just be careful because once you put that, you know, yeah. everything's fluid. We could know? put a million words in here. It doesn't necessarily mean that. So what you're saying is, Skolnick's got the easy job with the vindicator, <laughs> and Youngstown, <laughs> Gray's got the hard job. Uh, yeah. yeah, we uh, that is something we I've glanced at and looked into too. Is we are if I anybody mean, thinks we don't do what we need to do as a board as far as journalizing things. We beat a dead horse with this oh, yeah. stuff. I mean, we are, we we go way overboard on what we need to do. I'll be honest with you. Um, I was actually shocked, and this is no, you know, disregard to any other county. It just surprised me. HR has been questioned a lot about our agenda items. I have seen two other counties who put personnel actions on with no dollar amount, no dollar amount at all. Mm -hmm. They just say to move this person to, from here to there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, so I just want to make sure, you know. Yeah. We don't need to put our whole life and, and words and everything, you know, you guys know what you need to do. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay, 28 to enter into executive session. Uh, go to ORC 121.22 G4, uh, which is preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations and the collective bargaining strategy for the Trumbull County Sheriff's Department. And then 29 is to reconvene from that. Number 30 is um, to accept or reject the fact-finding report um, and recommendations issued by Howard D. Silver, Esquire, um, who was the fact finder on March 13, 2024. Which deputies are these? Which branch? So this is the last uh, commissioner, Alexander, even Jensen Bush, Human Resources Department, Archie Patterson, our remembering. Um, this is the last, this is the CO sergeant. So this is Unit 6. Um, this will complete all of the sheriff's OPBA uh, department's contracts. We've done one, two, three, four, five, and now six. So this is the final one. Um, I do apologize. I can't help when a fact finder report is going to come in. Obviously, I forwarded it to you. It came in Friday at 2.45. We know that you only have seven days to accept or reject. Right. So unfortunately, this one didn't fall in the normal cadence. It is what it is. All right? Okay. I understand. That concludes the agenda. Um, we've got Shara has something for oh. us. Let's go right there. I, I have a, a couple things I need to talk to you guys about. Um, first, Shara thing, Taylor, Commissioner Zuff. Shara yeah. Taylor, Council Table Clerk. Step, step up a little forward, Shara, so they can step up to the mic. capture you on the mic. <laughs> no, I do not. As a matter of fact, I want to get out of here as quick as I can. Okay, first and foremost, um, I, I do recall I asked about carpet for family court down there. We have three quotes. And uh, family court is actually requesting that we go with the lowest bid, which is it's a significant lower amount. So um, eleven thousand seven eighty six eighty nine from Satoli. Pro flooring is thirteen thousand four seventy two thirty, and then 
Last, we have condo carpets, which is $16,996.79. For all the same work, same amount, same everything. So this is always the low one? Yes. Okay, uh, no problem with that. Okay, awesome. Now, next, I have... Commissioner, you... Oh, no, I talked to Scott one, but... Oh, okay, yeah. you did? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. excellent. So, so you that's concur, all, that's good, we can do that? That's all squared away. Uh, where am I taking the money from? <laughs> Chris is uh, auditor's office. Um, if you guys approve that, we'll find it. Um, yeah, okay. but the, and then we would also include that wording in the agenda yeah. item where you're approving where it's being paid out of in the general fund with the transfer from sales tax. Because we're trying to get out of making those expense payments directly out of the sales tax fund and, and put them into the general fund where they're. Uh, so I can write that up for her to add to that. Perfect. Okay, now we also use, we're, we're under an agreement with Maximus. Um, a lot of the counties use Maximus. It's for a cost allocation plan. Keep everything coordinated, try to keep costs lower, see where we can save, that kind of thing. This is the book that we get. And we get it every year, but there's one little nuance. This really needs to be certified by us that this is okay, that we're in agreement with it. Maximus goes through a lot of work, and I'm certain that they don't rewrite this every year. They change the cost as they come. They come, get into units. They go get all of our own costs, everything, our, our numbers from they our payroll. From all yeah, our exactly. Yeah. Not just cost, too, but, like, number of items. Yeah, because they yeah. allocate. Number like, of people. Right, number, yeah. It's, there's it's, there's a, it's a totality. Transactions and everything. So... What I need from somebody is, and we did get this electronically. This is just preliminary. It's not going to be printed until we sign this okay. That's what this essentially is, an okay for this plan. So I just need to know who will be doing that. Who will be signing? Yeah. Right now, I have an invoice for Maximus. It's 15 grand yearly. Well, we, we, all this. I know that, as you said, the majority of counties use Maximus, yes. and they've done a great job yes, uh, they in have. all of our buildings. Fantastic. Um, have we? Is this something that needs to go out for bid, or is this is this like something that you know? Just off the top, yeah. I would guess that it's first of all it's well under the seventy-five thousand mm -hmm. dollar threshold. And arguably, is probably for the services of consultants. It probably is exempt for a number of reasons. Okay. Uh, I also wouldn't doubt that because they work all over, that there may be some sort of purchasing contract that they're also part of. But again, because of the low dollar amount, I don't know that that's ever been asked of our office. Okay. Uh, because well, again, that's well under. And here's the thing: they, they've worked with the county for as long as I can remember. They've done a tremendous yes, they job. Have. So I, I'm I'm prepared to move on it. It's it's forty five thousand dollars for three years of all. I mean they do an exorbitant amount of work for us. Yeah. An exorbitant amount. So I just it, I don't even know gonna, what other entities are out there that would do that. Plus for another entity to come in and redo everything Maximus has done. Right. It's going to be significant. I, I don't know how they would do that. So like for and I know they have other counties. Oh. And that's why, you know, I'm talking to him because no one's really ever, I, and I did it for the first time, apparently the, the initial spreadsheet has never been divvied out to each department, mm -hmm. but I did that this year because I think that everybody should be privy to what is on this report. So I, I got a little, a few squawks about it. You know, what do I do with this? Just look it over. I don't know that... He's doing all the numbers. I just think every department should have their own information. And I know for a fact that a couple of them have went through and checked their numbers and they com match completely with units. So with that being said, you know, th this is what we use for JFS and mm -hmm. CSEA to give us an amount for indirect costs. Mm -hmm. We get reimbursed for the rent. rent utilities. And, and the, yeah, yep. and because it's, utilities are significant. Yeah. So, and they utilize every square inch of yeah, what they're they using every, and charge back, yeah. basically. So literally, like, that's how I get my amounts to, you know, bill the other departments. Mm -hmm. It is only CSEA and JFS, but it's significant, I can tell you that. Just rent alone, 
is like yesterday I did the check, or last week I did the check, I don't know, uh, days are all running together. It was like almost $15,000 just in rent. I don't have the, indir the dir indirect costs. They're going to be given to me when this is completed. Mm -hmm. So once I have that, then I can forward it and bill back to those particular departments so we can get some money, more money put back in the general fund. So you're asking to put this on the agenda and for us It to doesn't report. really get put on an agenda. I just need to know who signs this. I, my understanding is that there's been confusion in the yeah. past as to who is supposed to sign it. So at one time, the county auditor signed it, okay. yeah. Giuliano, uh, a few times Paula has signed it as the clerk. Uh, but I believe uh, Sharon reached out to Kate Anderson with Maximus, and yeah. he said that uh, traditionally the counties have a commissioner sign the certification. That's I don't mind signing it. I don't care. My president board, I guess that's probably an Aaron. I can sign it. No big okay. Deal. Awesome. Then I will get with one of you, and then I can get him going on this, so we can get our lat and get this Excellent. firmed up. I guess just Bill Danza from the prosecutor's office. I guess I just might suggest that if even if the president of the board is going to sign it, mm -hmm. journalizing it wouldn't be a bad idea. That way, Fun. it's okay. clear that, that the board itself has seen the the document and has approved that signature. Uh, generally, that's the way for ha to have binding effect. That's how it would be done. Okay. So let's put it on the agenda for yeah. next week. When in doubt, put it on. To enter an agreement or whatever. Then with I, that I will let him know. Well. I'll give him. I'll give. I'll notify him and let him know that it's going to go on the agenda next week. Cool. Be signed. Okay. Okay. So that. Sarah, was, real quick, I do have a question. So we yeah. should already have an agreement, right, with Max? We've had an agreement. So we have the agreement. It's all, the okay. So we don't need. Already, when he said agreement, I just want to make sure I'm. No, no, no. Sure. We well, don't need an agreement. We already have an agreement. We're just journalizing the six D. Acceptance of the maximum. This, this particular report. This yeah. particular yes. year's report. So we're just not in agreement with maximum. Yes. So I so want to make that very clear. The language, well, and it's still here, but it should be to approve the 2024-2025 report from maximum. Yeah. It's actually 2022. Yeah. We're not looking at an agreement. We should already have an agreement. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. All right. Be like the monthly. Be like receiving the monthly minutes of the dog founder of the. Tours and bureau. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. knew somebody this unqualified would know that? I'm amazed. Sorry. Weird. Not sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I have one last thing. I'm so sorry for holding everybody up, but we received from, it's called the LATCF, it's the Local Assistance and Tribal Consistency Funds. We got a little bit of money, ARPA money, from that. But it's different in the respect that you can use it for anything you want to, except lobbying. So we have $103,164.88. I have done two reports now, and not one penny has been sent out of it. Can we please spend this money? I can find some money. Pay for that, lady. I have, <laughs> I have stuff for you guys to look over so you can see exactly what you can do with it. That's awesome. It's great. But it's not as stringent. We don't need the Could attorney to go through it. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Throwing yeah. it out there, commissioners. Bill Hart, Tomba County Maintenance. Could we throw that towards jail lighting project that yeah. they needed that they wanted to investigate on? Yeah, I'd be good with that. Oh. <laughs> I just want to spend the money and, and do the report and say it's all been spent. When did we receive it? We received two, they call them tranches, we received two of them, like each one was like 51000 okay. something. So we've had the money for quite a while. They were deposited into the ARPA fund in yeah. 77. Okay. But they're not as, they're, not as no, restricted not as, the, the, as the regular ARPA fund. Yeah, my pay in. The, the, so do we still need to get a Baker uh, Dubois' no. opinion on this? No, that's not my, that's my understanding of no. It's not the same as the ARPA money. Yeah. It's through a different, it's through a different uh, funding it's, it's source. Okay. It's just accounted for in the same fund because we yeah. put all the ARPA, whether it was from the um, feds or from here. We got the, the, the one twelve twenty nine twenty two, and the other one was nine fourteen twenty three. So they just put it in half and sent them to us. Wired them. Oh to wow! Us. Yeah, this is very business travel consistent. Thank <laughs> you.
Can we, can we our room for it? I'll tell you what, Commissioner, let's take, let's take a week to review this thing yeah, no, no, a little bit before we make any decisions on this. Yeah, I mean, I don't expect anything to be happening today. I just wanted to make you guys aware that this is sitting there, and I've done two reports now, and zero has been spent. And it's pretty clear that we can we can do what we want with it. You just can't use it for lobbying, which we're not well, talking about anything. Not. Like to do you want to send uh, even a copy of that mm -hmm. down in my email? I will. Yeah. Okay. So I'll if you can look in that a little bit, right. if there's any loopholes of what we can and can't spend it on, then report okay. back maybe next Tuesday. We'll go over this again and we'll get a chance to let it sink in and do some research. You know, this is talking about tribal governments. It's got tribal all through here and stuff, so we got to, I mean, I got to read into this yeah. more. That's sure. where the funding source was, was the tribal government. Yeah. We had some confusion when it came in. Yeah, yeah. we did. We had some, it was a little bit. Uh, but, but it does say, uh, at the bottom half of the first page, um, you know, it talks about roads, bridges, and water infrastructure, but then it goes on to say, we also invest in restoring and bolstering government capacity, mm -hmm. such as increasing the size of their government workforce, or investing in improvements in service delivery, um, like technology infrastructure and data analysis. I mean, there's a... That's sort of a wide umbrella there, a large umbrella when you talk Sorry, about it. Sorry, I might say it now. This, this was a lot easier to use than the regular ARPA fund. Everybody it's not as stringent. It was bolstering really government capacity. That's exactly what I mean, it was. I'll, I'll send it. Yeah. That's what it was intended for. That's lovely. Interesting. So I just wanted to bring that Thank because you. I think it's just kind of like falling by the way side a little bit. Yeah. Everything it was in there. It was just... Yeah, yeah, it's been there. It's just we really have not... <coughs> really had not had the time to go through a lot of stuff that we need to just we need to start working on this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And we need to spend it so I can stop doing all of this reporting and zero 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 zero. We yeah. need to do something with it. So oh, yeah, just a suggestion. Yeah, sometimes there's timelines on these too. So yeah. we have to make sure that yeah. we're so it's just not missing a timeline and not spending money. I want to say, if I recall correctly, it's like next year. Okay. Commissioner, so there's there also there's limit. two there's a time limit then on it. two ARPA funds we were just made aware of this week that were denied. Okay. One was for Kinsman um, electronic sign. The other one was for Johnson's electronic sign out front where we were going to post community news and updates, this and that. So. There are some things like that that are out there that are minimal. They're 23,000, 30,000, where maybe some of that we can still fulfill the wish that's already there that, was, that wasn't approved um, by uh, Definitely Tony looking. Rogers. Yeah. Okay. okay and, and that's all I have. Check. Big check. Big fake dummy big check. check. Okay. We, that kind of got lost by the wayside as well. Can we call Minuteman? I already did. It's me. already done. He's okay. going to bring one that he had just laying around, so we just might have to doctor it up a little bit. That's fine. So we'll see what's up. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And that's all I have. Thank so you, Sarah. I'm Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to, if we could, uh, Commissioner. Yes. Um, I'd like to put Beth on the spot a little bit to give us a little update on the Eclipse. And oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. What happened around the county, no issues. I talked to John Aiki. Hey. He was kind of, he called me actually at 2.30. Uh, he said, Commissioner, I need you to come to my office right away. And I said, what's going on, John? He said, I'm bored. Nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, no, he, which is a good thing. Yeah. You know, we didn't have any big crashes or any no. uh, grid problems or any safety issues with the community. It seemed like uh, what I viewed it as was like when you drove around the county and I went over to the airport and drove around the Vian area and that area just looking and people were in their yards, they were playing cornhole, they were barbecuing. It seemed to me like it was 4th of July or something, like a Sunday 4th of July picnic so everywhere in the community. And le literally anywhere there was a big parking lot, whether it was at Baker Elementary or whether it was at the airport or across from the airport, airport parking lot was full of people. There was people coming up throwing their picnic blankets out, eating food, having picnic baskets and stuff, and watching it. Watching it. And it was it was really, really pretty cool. Pretty cool. We, um, as we had expected, and we shared with the commissioners last Beth, August. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Voice is loud enough. Beth Hot with Carmichael, Trumbull County Tourism. As we had talked to the commissioners last August, myself and John Hickey, our expectation was that it would be a last-minute decision for a lot of people 
I stayed here at the office. I had staff at Mosquito Lake and then at the Eastwood Mall, as well as they did a stop at Skyway. And that's what we found. A lot of people were saying, I met somebody from Washington, D.C. who said, oh, I found you guys on the internet. So we're like, yay, our marketing is working. And I said, oh, well, how long ago did you plan to come up? And he said, oh, yesterday. He literally was looking yesterday. There were a lot of people that I had come in contact with that just said, we were going to go to Cleveland, but it sounded too crazy. We weren't going to go there. I know Samantha out in Mosquito Lake met somebody from Switzerland. Wow. Who, um, or Sweden, excuse me, Sweden, who specifically was noting, she, uh, Samantha was the one that built out our landing page for TrumbleEclipse.com. And she said that uh, the woman from Sweden is, says, I'm here because of that landing page. And so she was excited to get that feedback because she said it was just clear, concise. It gave all the information I was looking for. Um, I have spoken to people up in Kinsman. They said they saw a lot of people. Um, Mesopotamia saw several, I would say, a couple hundred people up there. So happy that it was a safe event. We, um, talking to the Grand Resort, uh, we found the same thing. Like the people that were found, uh, the amphitheater, everything was clean. There was like no trash. Um, the resort was talking about how nice and courteous and respectful people were at their their guests were over this whole experience. So um, we haven't heard anything. The biggest issue was traffic coming, you know, as we had expected and anticipated. The traffic uh, leaving. But I left at like 6.30 last night, and I was still hitting traffic on 82 and Route 11. So it seemed like as um, Commissioner Malloy had said, you know, a lot of people either pre-eclipse or post-eclipse were in our restaurants. They, um, they were eating. Um, I know that Best Western here in downtown Warren said that he had 35 reservations in the last week. So again, that last minute, oh, A, our weather was great. And then B, those last minute people, but we saw people from Maryland. I don't, you had seen um, uh, license plates from Virginia. Yeah. West Virginia, North Carolina, um, Georgia. There was somebody from um, California at the resort. So, and the cool thing for us was there were people that would never have come to Trumbull County. And so many people said, what a nice community. What a great downtown area. You know, they, they loved being here. So we were able to introduce our community to a lot of people that hadn't been here before, which was really <coughs> exciting. We are waiting. We um, have, we uh, buy a subscription for a platform, a mobile data tracking platform. We'll start to get some results here in the next week or so to see, um, it, you know, what kind of impact it had. Well, I do know that uh, hotel capacity was pretty much maxed out and even the... <laughs> That'll work perfect. <laughs> but this is not dry erase, so I don't know how we're going to figure this out. To print on it. Print on it. Okay. Just write on it and have Dean make another one. <laughs> <laughs> Sends us the bill. Yeah. I would, honestly. <laughs> honestly. honestly uh, yeah. I mean, let's let's just write on that one. Give it delivery. They can take it back and hang it in their headquarters or whatever. Oh, and then we'll you know, get more. What are we going to do about the next one? We'll, we'll order more. We'll get more, baby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We'll put your guys. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't mess up on the spelling or anything, because we only got one. That's put pressure on you. He said that. He just already said that. That's, that's what's gonna happen. Need a big <laughs> bottle of white out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. The Hampton Inn yesterday still at the rooms. There was three hundred sixty-nine dollars for a room at the Hampton, wow. and it was like that everywhere. I had some friends that were staying in the Cleveland area. Rooms oh, are going for six hundred to nine hundred. They're typically one hundred and seven dollar rooms, and all the way to Sandusky. Um, a lot of people made a lot of money off of this, and, and like I said yesterday, when it was done, if you were around the Elm Road area, or if you're running or in Howland, every restaurant parking lot was full. So. People went out, they saw it, and then they saw we got something to eat. They probably shopped at the mall. A lot of those people that came in from out of town, they saw the attractions that we had. So it was one of those things we really didn't know what to expect. But, you know, in 100, 150 years, you took good notes. If it happens again, <laughs> we'll know what to expect with the next one. But it was a, it was something the next one, I think, is in 21 years in the southern United States. And I think there were people who might want to travel for something like that if they saw it in the 70s and Remembered it like that? Yeah. That's why I think a lot of people were here. But we want to do it again. We have all these ideas. So. That's right. 
We want that. We want to do it again. And John Hickey, I mean, he lives for this stuff. Yesterday he was oh, his, yeah. his office. I mean, he had everything down to the Zoom things, communicating with the EMA director from other states. And, I mean, as this thing was happening, it was like he was Houston and NASA, you know, <laughs> coordinating this thing. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, he was on the ball with that stuff. I mean, he probably didn't sleep last night. <laughs> great job to everybody involved with it, and great yeah. job that everything happened. And thank you for less letting the employees go home early. Oh, yeah. Every other business in the world, see, even my bank shut down. So, yeah. I mean, they were letting employees go home. And so we we may have brought awareness by that. And it, although it cost us some money to pay two and a half hours to employees to not work, uh, I'm talking to Beth yesterday. I think we more than made up for that, just in the awareness of being in the paper and it being a controversy and people saying, oh, wow, this is, this is on Monday, and they read about it. They may have got involved with it, and maybe that attracted some people here. But I think the kind of hidden return we're going to see on the tax dollars we made off of it probably is uh, um, going to more than cover the expense we had by letting employees go home early. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I know they were happy. So. Absolutely. Uh, that's all I had with that. Um, is there anybody else? Casey. I just have two quick things. I won't be here next week. I leave for vacation, and I missed the deadline for this week. Um, Casey McDonough, 911 director. Um, we're looking to purchase um, annual license to Critical. Um, that's what I told you guys before is about the um, retention and hiring, um, testing of dispatch candidates. It kind of does um, online Testing, we could do it remotely, so like if Alex is a candidate, she could take the test at home, we'll get a report. Um, it does personality testing, true north language testing, and basically it will do multitasking and kind of simulate uh, dispatch. I actually took one online, it was actually pretty neat, and does challenge you better than what the skills test we did have. Um, some agencies that have done it have um, increased their retention by like 60% once they implemented this. It's uh, $6,278 a year uh, for the annual license. So that'll be on the agenda for next week, but I won't be here to explain it to you, so I just want to let okay. you guys know about it. Um, Bill already reviewed the user agreement. It's not a contract. It's just a user agreement, and he made suggestions, and they updated those, and everything's already been submitted online today. Um, and then the one other thing I have for you guys is just a uh, letter of recommendation for a proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, which begins Sunday, April 14th through the 20th. I believe you guys do this every year. Um, it's pretty standard. Um, so it's, it's TC week uh, next week, the 14th or the 20th. Unfortunately, I will be on vacation. I never realized I take vacation that same week every year, but um, I will be golfing with nine girlfriends as well. Everybody else is hopefully working and enjoying work and, and, and not stressing out too much. Um, we did make it through, as you guys said, the eclipse with no issues. Um, thank you for the pizzas that were sent over. Um, we had several people who did rotate out to go see it. Um, it was pretty cool for the you know 30 seconds that you get to see the cool ring. Um, so that letter I've set up to for you guys as well to do that. And I think that is it. Yeah. So, that, so that program you think will, I mean, anything's worth a shot. And that's a, a minimal cost, I think. But try to find the right employees to, to get to these jobs. Unfortunately, it won't bring bodies to us. No, but I mean, but, but what it'll, it'll do, weed people out. It'll, it'll weed want, people out who get, yeah. you know, two months in and they're yeah, like, oh, that's, this that's is expensive. That so what we found is just going through the hiring process and doing the background checks that we do, you know, that that's a cost, the time, sure. the burden on the trainers. You know, when you're training multiple people consistently for months on end right. because you're just constantly rolling them over, what this will hopefully do is it'll get that, you know, one in five candidate who would make a potentially good yeah. hire so then we can invest our time in them and, and, and save that's everybody else's time. Yeah, so, absolutely. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay. Anyone else? Um, so I get a couple more things on here as well. Uh, Tim. Yes. Um, still getting feedback on the cameras for our weekly meetings, and even this year, where it kind of looks dark, kind of looks like the beginning of the eclipse or the end, where it isn't real bright on the camera. I don't know if it's a graphics thing or I don't know if it's a lighting thing that we have in here, um, but. There are a lot of people that watch the weekly meetings. Yes. A lot of people that watch the commissioner's weekly meeting because they have a better feed on her phone. And with her phone not going to be here next year, we still want the people to be engaged and still right. not miss a beat and be able to see what's going on. Can we start to really look at what do we need to do to increase the quality of what we have? Like right now, someone told me the other day, 
They said, I, I watch her feed because your feed is like C-SPAN you know, 1994. Right. And we need to do something a little better now. When I look at Austin Town or some of the other places that tape their things, it's bright. You can clearly see the, you know, the, the definition is a lot higher resolution. Right. And if there's something we can do to tweak these cameras, replace these cameras, or something, we, we spent good money on it. Mm-hmm. But it, it's if people aren't watching it because it's, it's too boring of a feed thing, and we need to spice that up a little bit. We can definitely. We we spoke with the company iVideo about that. They had recommended gave us several recommendations, including lighting, including the the paint uh, on on that wall, doing something different with that. Um, they did recommend there are higher end cameras if you want to spend the money on it. So um, that's a, there is all possibility. So if if we want to investigate spending more money on this on the system. We can. Uh, one of the ideas that we had had was taking one of those cameras that we have there and put it back here in this part of the room to use, instead of using that far end camera that's down there now. Um, that's definitely a possibility. Um, because maybe the light from that that it's probably it's helping or hurting. It, I don't know. It, it's probably the the lights from the windows. It's probably even during the regular meetings. It's probably those windows yes. there as well. This, let's face it. This room wasn't designed mm-hmm. as a production room, no. so it was designed as a meeting room. So um, there there are some options of, that we can look at. Yeah. I've looked at the Austin Town meeting. You you are correct. It is it is much clearer. Uh, it is also in a smaller room with wood paneling in that room. So. Um, it's a little bit of a darker room, but it is definitely clear. If you can look into that and just yes. see what some other options have. I mean, if, if we yeah. if we want to keep the public involved and engaged, and we don't want to be that boring. I mean, right. we want to have more boring meetings. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I like it to be quicker and more business oriented, right. but um, if people are going to take time to watch yes. or follow through, let's make it a better experience for them. Uh, secondly, I had a group reach out to me the other day, and I met with them. We've got this Kohlberg Lake issue that's been brought up to us uh, regarding the uh, dam study, mm-hmm. and they have a pretty big ask in there, which is in front of um, the attorney now. Um, there are some other groups that want to help out. I met with Trumbull County Community Foundation the other day, and they said they would be willing to put some money into this thing. So if it doesn't get approved by Tanya or – maybe part of it or whatever, I think we need to reach out to some of these community groups that maybe are more community-oriented, non-governmental for private property. And, and I mean, there's a long way to go with that as far yeah. as dealing with the owner and uh, what's going to happen with it. But it was someone where they reached out and they said, yeah, we can kick some money in. They're, they're sitting on $13 million in their foundation or something. And they, they said that they're based out of Brookfield, Hubbard area. And they said, you know, they, they want to get involved in helping out any way they can. So we need to uh, hook them up with the right people and then see what happens with this grant with Tanya and, and then add that as another tool to the box there. Okay. Um, tomorrow, the Trumbo County Board of Commissioners is receiving, I think it's the Spirit of the Valley Award yeah. from the Chamber of Commerce. It's a breakfast meeting at 7.30 a.m. at Waypoint, um, Banquet Hall at the, the hotel in Boardman, off Western Reserve Road, and they are asking for one commissioner to be there to receive the award in front of their breakfast group. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you want to arm wrestle, <laughs> flip a quarter, <laughs> you know, yes. come up with some type of a no. challenge today to figure out who goes. We got, we got them all covered. But it's um, it is tomorrow at 7:30 a.m. So one of us okay. has to be there off early. Um, <laughs> I guess I don't mind doing it if you want me to do it. If you would like to do it, you've been here longer than me. I'll give you preference if you want to do it. If not, I will. I'll go if I have seniority, then I'll delegate it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do that. You can do that. It is in Mahoney County, which is a drive too. So we're talking. I'll just stay up tonight. But I, I, got, I will do that if you want me to. Do it. Sure. Okay. Well, yeah. Like I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Like you weren't inkling this way at all. I know you got kids to get like school and everything else. So. <laughs> I I attended the first Valley Vision meeting last week. 
Um, I think it was on Thursday, and we met at Eastgate. They had about 35 people in the room, and it was pretty awesome for a start. Uh, we went over it, and there was a slideshow, and there's a presentation that I'll forward to you and Commissioner Frenchko to see what I saw when I was there. Yeah. Um, it's just a for educational purpose, you know, yeah. thing to see what they what they're uh, asking for. Um, as we talked about before, I'll serve as our representative on there. I think uh, Commissioner Ditzler is from Honey County, although they had all three other people there at the last meeting. He's, it just will be him going forward as they narrow the focus down. Okay. Um, the one thing we were lacking was. Trumbull County representation. The only other person there from Trumbull County um, was a gentleman from Bright, and they had asked us to not be outnumbered 28 to 2, that we think of other organizations from Trumbull County that should sit on the, the Valley Vision panel, um, that, that should have representation. Of course, I they have YSU representative there. I think we need to reach out to Kent State Trumbull and find someone from Kent Trumbull um, to to serve on the panel representing Trumbull County or Trumbull County interests. And we need to look at some of our bigger foundations, some of our bigger groups that are involved in there, um, and see if we can find one or two other people that want to want to serve on this. How many more are they looking for? Well, they don't want to get too big. They want to have 30 is what their ultimate goal is, to have no more than 30. And with that, it's like they had someone from the Youngstown Foundation, somebody from Eastgate, you know, someone from the Port Authority, you know, all the different groups, but then there were a lot of a lot of foundations that were small that were represented there. And it would they serve their purpose. Some of the stuff is gonna be to find those little loopholes to help the homeless and small business and things like that. So there are it's a it's a pretty diverse group. There's some of the groups we kind of weeded out a little bit, um, that uh were brought up and we, we kind of thought, you know, that just doesn't really serve economically. Um but Economically, we got to look at what interest groups we have here in Trumbull County and find people to, to assist us in serving Trumbull County. So that's something, uh, okay. just throwing it on the table, that yeah. next meeting we go to, I'd like to have two or three other Trumbull County interests there with me so that when all the money is distributed equitably and stuff, we have we have good representation of, our, of the whole Mahoning Valley. Maybe even uh, our economic development coordinator and that's a possibility. You know. uh, Beth is another one yeah. that, I, that I thought would be a good asset, uh, being they serve under her own board. You know, it's, it's it is kind of a separate entity in a sense. Um, Nick, of not course, that, not that Nick's not on enough boards, right? <laughs> but this is something that's on my board. It's on every board. Nick's on every board. <laughs> After you see the slideshow and you see what what they're doing and how they're incorporating this thing in the, in the funding structure and stuff. You know, we are a major player. We're a million dollars to the table, as is Mahoney County. Yep. So I want to make sure we have equal representation when it comes to votes on things, too, oh, that, yeah. that we are getting our fair share. You know, like I said, maybe one of these Beaumont Avenue people, somebody from Niles, they, they can represent the interest of Niles in the 422 corridor. Maybe somebody from Warren. Dude, certainly the mayors of Warren and Youngstown were invited to be part of it, and neither of them should. Um, but this might be something where I, I think the mayor of Niles should be. To be heard. No, I, if, I said Niles, if I said Niles, I was wrong. And Mayor Warren and Youngstown were invited and didn't show. But uh, I will, I'll be reaching out to some of the other communities and try to you know, put together the best economic team we can have. Uh, and then finally, we have a joint chamber meeting at the end of the month on a Friday. I think it's the 25th. Yes. And that is the meeting we attended last year where you have Mahoney County Commissioners and Trumbull County Commissioners. At a Port Authority meeting, I'm sorry, it's Port Authority yes. for this together. They're doing it at, at Sam Cavelli's office, okay. and um, they're asking all three of our commissioners to be present, as well as Mahoney, to discuss things in the interest through the Port Authority and their board, things in the interest of combining of the combined counties. Um, I don't know. Last year, I don't remember if we had to notify this thing anything special or anything. Uh, I, Bill? Think, I think the didn't the. Port Authority notified it was their meeting, so they notified right. the press on their own, didn't they? That they did, but I just want to make sure we're legal with all of us being there, participating in this, and joint with the Mahoney commissioners. I know they have no problem with it, none of the other commissioners in the world do, <laughs> but they don't live in Trumbull County and deal with what we deal with on a daily basis. So I just want to make sure us going to it that we are covered. If you can just look into that a little bit. That's something we have to look into. If you guys could, somebody could shoot me down an email, we can check into what it takes for that. Okay. I just don't want, I mean, 
Yeah, I want to rain on that parade. I mean, this is a a great thing for the valley, a great thing for us, a great thing that to, to work jointly with other communities, and um, we can't be held hostage. That yeah, we've done it for years now. That annual meeting with the we have. authority, so we have an issue. But. And not that we're making decisions there, but there are times where we have discussion and we go around the room and we you know, we talk on things, and they'll be asking for us. But the public is invited, and the press is notified. So. They are. But, like you said, we work under different rules there. There's the rules rules, and then there's the made-up <laughs> rules. That's all I have. Anybody else have anything for the good? I'm good. Quicker workshop today. I know that uh, we do have a meeting here in this room. We'll be televised again That's at 1 o'clock. Yeah. And that is a joint meeting with the Warren Township trustees and our Board of Park Commissioners, Metro Parks, and uh, interested parties in the dam issue in Levittsburg. Um, capacity in this room, Bill, I don't know how many chairs we have, but anything beyond the chairs we have here, we will have an overflow area that's set up in the uh, yeah. veterans, the veterans building. building. They're aware they're, they're ready to go. Over okay, so they got a TV the, there, they got uh, chairs there for the public. We're using this setup here? We're gonna use this setup right here. So they're, Overflow, be, I mean, the people. People, be yeah, we can add a lot more chairs back there. I mean, um, no. even more in here. Yeah. I think it's Don't best, Commissioner, because it was brought up the other day that we all sit at the round table. Yeah, like, this equals with this thing sure. to talk about it and for us to be up on the dais and then to sit down, I think, is just condescending toward the trustees and the board. This has got to be something where we're all in this thing as community equal on this, no yeah. better than the other ones. And I think by being at a round table like this, just a respect factor and listening to people for the core that needs to discuss what we need to discuss, I feel this is best. Yeah, and if you concur this yeah, way, I'd like to do it. Yeah. Okay, if there's nothing else, make a motion to adjourn. Motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Cantil Mesa? Yes. Mr. Malloy? Yes. Thank you, everybody.